Hi, my name is Peter Krake and I'm the founder of Open Knowledge Maps and at Open Knowledge Maps we're all about visibility and reuse of scientific knowledge. And in theory, it's all there. We're all standing on the shoulders of giants and we're building on top of each other's work. But in practice, it looks much more like this. We're all swamped with the literature. 2.5 million articles are published each year. And so it's really hard to get an overview of a field. And once you have it, then to keep it. And that's a hard task for researchers, but it's exponentially harder for everyone outside of academia. And that's why we said it's really time to change the way we discover research. And when I say we, I mean a charitable nonprofit that is dedicated to dramatically increasing the visibility of scientific knowledge for science, but also for all the other stakeholders in society. Our proposal is to use knowledge maps for discovery. And the main advantages that a knowledge map has over a list representation is that they show the um, important areas of the field at the plants. And you already have relevant resources attached to each area, so you can get immediately started. This is the theory. In practice, you can go to our website, openknowledgemaps.org. Oh. And you can type in a, a field of interest and create your own knowledge map. So for example, I'm gonna do that for oops, digital education. So what happens in the background, we create now the knowledge map and um, if it loads, then you can see it looks very similar to the example. So the bubbles represent the main areas. And once you've found an area that you're interested in, for example, down here, um, you can then inspect the papers that are in it. And um, through the wonders of open access, you can also access the PDF then of the article that you're interested in. Okay, so the main advantages that we see is that you can get this bird's eye view of a field. You can identify relevant concepts. You can sort the relevant from the irrelevant, depending on your information need by focusing on the bubbles that are of your interest. And we're an interface over all scientific knowledge, open and closed, but we will make it always uh, especially um, easy to get to the open content and provide extra services for it. We're open science all the way. All of our source code is on GitHub. All of our content is CC BY. All of our data is CC0. At the moment, it's hard to get to it. So we work with organizations like Wikidata to improve that. And we're also working in the open. By we, I mean a dedicated core team of mostly volunteers. And we also have an organization member, the No Center. We also found a lot of advisors from the open science and open knowledge space. And Natalia Manola and Daniel Mikin are also in attendance of this meeting. We've always partnered with other nonprofits, so that's why we found the idea of JROST especially enticing. And as you can see, Hypothesis and Impact Story, as well as the um, Wikimedia chapters of Austria and Germany, they're already part of JROST as well. We also have a community program of people from all around the world who are enthusiastic about making discovery more open. Um, and we're very happy to have these people in our community. Yeah, and the uh, first two and a half years that we've been in existence, we've quite created quite a lot of enthusiasm in the community. We've had um, half a million visits on the website, more than 100,000 maps have been created, and we've given offline workshops and sessions with more than 1,000 participants. We've also conducted projects with the Austrian Academy of Sciences, Open Air, and the Ludwig Wartsmann Society in Austria. We've done all of this on a teeny tiny budget of less than a 50K a year. So this is kind of the funding bug that we're battling right now. So if you have any ideas, want to do joint um, project proposals or anything in that uh, direction, please come and talk to me. Sarah is a first-year PhD student in finance, starting a thesis on the Zika virus. Open Knowledge Maps has automatically created a map on the Zika virus for her. Sarah identifies a number of articles that were in their own area. So she goes into edit mode. She adds a new area and drags the papers she found into the newly created map. She adds a title and places the area on the map. Sarah is interrupted by a message from a supervisor, Lauren. Lauren suggests a presentation relates to the Zika virus that she's added to the joint Zotero group. 
So we'll connect to KMAPS to a Zotero account and import the presentation into a map. The KMAPS automatically places the new content on the map. Sarah publishes and tweets the link of a map for other users to explore and modify on on KMAPS. The next day, she fires up her email to see that fellow PhD student Ana has added several papers to her map. She also notices that Tom, who's working on a map on a disk, has included her map as a sub-map of this. All right, that's everything that I wanted to say. Thank you for your attention.